there. So today we're going to be discussing pH and your shampoos and we're going to be talking about how pH can affect your scalp and your hair and help you determine whether or not your shampoo is damaging your scalp, your hair, or both. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. I'm a licensed hairstylist with over 20 years of experience and on this channel I use those 20 years of experience to help you have healthy, happy hair. Before we start talking about pH values in shampoo and which is best for the hair, let's just talk about the pH of your hair. Your hair at its healthiest is going to be at a pH of about 4.5 to 5.5. So why is pH important for both your hair and your scalp? Well, the pH helps to maintain healthy levels of bacteria and fungus. They live on our skin, on our hair, and keeping a proper pH is going to help keep the bad bacteria and fungus at bay and therefore keep you from getting bacterial or fungal infections on your scalp. But we're not just dealing with your scalp, we're also dealing with hair. And the more alkaline something is, so the higher the number, the higher the number is, the more alkaline it is, and the more alkaline it is, the more damage it's going to cause to your hair because that alkaline will lift your cuticle. Acids seal the cuticle and shut the cuticle. And so anything that is on the alkaline side is going to raise your cuticle and the higher the alkalinity, the more it's going to raise your cuticle and it's going to help deteriorate the structure of your hair. It'll become weaker, more brittle, and it can get to the point where it starts to fall apart and it'll cause a lot of damage the higher the number gets on the pH scale. So it's important to make sure that the shampoos and conditioners that you're using on your hair are more on an acid level so that you can seal that cuticle back down and keep it closed and help maintain the moisture of your hair. So when you're searching for a shampoo, you're gonna wanna try to find a shampoo that is somewhere between 3.6 and 5.5. Now, there are some shampoos that are outside of that. Clarifying shampoos will go slightly higher. My favorite clarifying shampoo is a pH value of nine, which is definitely more alkaline. However, it, it is formulated that way so that it can remove all of the bad stuff from your hair that you definitely don't want in there. And then after using something that is higher on the alkalinity side, then you would just deep condition afterwards, conditioners, are more acidic and they're designed that way on purpose to help seal and smooth the cuticle down. So can high levels of pH cause some of the scalp damage, hair loss, and hair damage that we have seen from some companies that have gotten some pretty big press over uh, issues that they've had where we've seen some of these things and there are lawsuits taking place and yes, high pH levels can definitely cause all of that because it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna damage the hair, it's gonna damage the scalp. If you're damaging the scalp, you can cause issues with the hair follicles. And since the follicles are where your hair grows from, if you're causing damage to the follicles, then your hair can't grow properly. It can cause uh, you to have breakage, it can cause hair loss, so yes, a high pH can cause some of the damage that we have seen from some of these brands. However, I will not, and the reason why I'm not mentioning those brand names and I'm not going to speak about them directly is because I have no knowledge of their formulation. I have no knowledge of their pH values and without having direct hands-on knowledge and without being a cosmetic chemist, I cannot speak directly on these individual brands, those particular products, and say with any amount of certainty that they did in fact cause this. That just would not be ethical on my part to give you a definitive answer that yes, this is what caused that. That would definitely not be responsible on my end to say something like that because I do not have the knowledge and the information in order to be able to say that at all. 
So that is not something that I am going to do. I am not gonna say definitively that's what it is because I just don't have enough information and I am not in a position to be able to make that call and to say with any amount of certainty that that's what that is. All I can say is that higher levels of pH can cause breakage, can cause weak, brittle hair, can cause dry hair, it can cause scalp issues, and can cause breakage and hair loss. That's what I can say. So when it comes to finding products that are within the proper pH levels, so I had to do some digging here because I don't typically think about, know, or look up the pH levels of the shampoos that I use. I go by feel. I definitely, after 20 years of doing hair, I know what it feels like when alkaline has hit the hair. I know what that feels like, what that does to the cuticle. So I go by results when I try my shampoos. And if I can feel that on there, I definitely don't use it again. So that's how I choose shampoos is strictly by results. And the other thing is, is that prior to this channel, I have used the same shampoos for a very long time. I just maybe alternate back and forth or I rotate things around. But if you watched my top five shampoos video, most of those shampoos I have used for a very long time and I just don't switch them up that much because once you find your shampoo that really works and it cleans your hair, that is your foundation. Like starting off with clean hair that hasn't been stripped that is your foundation and almost everything I put on and use after that just kind of builds on it from there. So as long as I've got my shampoo and so once I find that, I tend to not want to be looking around for a bunch of other shampoos. I stick to the ones that I've always used. So those have always worked well for me and I am actually, because I couldn't find the, val the pH values on a lot of shampoos. I actually bought test strips, so I am testing all of my shampoos and I will have them listed in the description box down below and I'll have an asterisk next to each one of my favorites so that you can see if my favorites are within the proper pH level. The one that is one of my favorites that is going to be outside of it is going to be the Malibu C Undo Goo and that's because it is a chelating shampoo and I know that that one is a pH of nine and it needs to be in order to do its job. But everything else I have already tested for my favorites anyway, I've already tested and they are where they should be. They're all at about a 5.5. So I will have a list of that so you can see all of that so that you know what the values are when you're reading through my list and you're watching my video about the top five shampoos. So something else that I came across while I was trying to find pH values for the shampoos, I came across a study that was done where they actually tested shampoos and they tested anti-dandruff shampoos, they tested what they called commercial shampoos or popular shampoos, and then they also had professional shampoos. So my guess is what they're calling commercial and popular is actually like drugstore shampoos, and then they went to the professional ones. And in the study, 75% of professional shampoos that they tested were within the correct range. And then with the commercial brands or the popular brands or what I would assume would be the drugstore brands, only 35% of those were within the correct range. So between the two, the professional ones, far more shampoos fell within the correct range with the professional shampoos than with your commercial or popular shampoos. And I'm gonna leave that study down below so you can look at it yourself. And I have to say that in my 20 years of doing hair, I find this to be consistent with what I've seen when clients would come in and they've been using drugstore shampoos and then I've switched them over. There is definitely a difference in the condition and feel of their hair once they make that switch. And I can always tell whenever they went back to the less expensive shampoo or the drugstore shampoo, whatever it was they were using. I could always feel it when they came back in. So that's part of the reason why I tend not to try a whole lot of affordable 
shampoos on here is because it is something that I have seen time and time again over my 20 year career that when people use professional brand shampoos, their hair definitely had uh, a better feel to it, was more manageable, less damaged, and it was a lot drier, more brittle, more fragile, and roughed up when using the less expensive, more affordable type shampoos. Now saying that doesn't necessarily mean that every single affordable brand is automatically bad. It just means that there are fewer of those brands that are actually within the correct range. So there are some that exist. It just, you need to find those brands. So my recommendation for shampoos are first going to be the shampoos that I listed underneath my favorites and that I'll definitely fall within the pH. Or the other thing that I would recommend would be to purchase the litmus papers or the little pH test strips from Amazon. You can get them pretty inexpensively and then you can test your shampoos to make sure that they are within the correct pH. So then that way you can be sure that you're using a shampoo that actually isn't going to be damaging your hair. But also, like I said, I am going to be leaving a list down below in my description box for all of the shampoos that I currently have. And I will put an asterisk next to the one that showed up in my favorites list so that you know that they're there and you can check out my favorites or any of the shampoos that I've listed that aren't necessarily on my favorites list, but you might be interested in them. I they're all shampoos that I have reviewed on here. So if you find that brand for that review, you can check out that review video and see what I had to say about that before you decide to purchase those. So hopefully you found this video helpful in regards to pH and why it's important for both your scalp and your hair. And hopefully you find down below uh, maybe a recommendation or a shampoo that you might want to try. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more content like this, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell while you're at it. And if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you'd like to see, please go ahead and leave those down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.